The Operative, Yawara, Prisoner of War, Sky, Aaron Cole. He is the Lord of Atlantis and a founding member of the Justice League. He can raise armies, call on the world's greatest heroes, and unleash his own astonishing power. But when threats arise that Aquaman can't face either alone or with his usual allies, he calls on others. Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting episode. We are continuing our Aquaman readathon throughout the year. Uh, this time for the month of July, we are going back to the New 52 with Aquaman and the others. This is a very interesting title. Here are the covers for uh, the two trade paperbacks. I say interesting because the whole premise of this book stems from the idea that you've read the New 52 run from Jeff Johns when he first rebooted the title, the character, and all that stuff, and he introduced the others. They are introduced very early on. The others, like I mentioned, are a team that Aquaman has that is prior to the League's founding. They are all, I don't want to spoil it just in case you've never read it, but they're all bound by the fact that they each carry an Atlantean artifact that gives them sort of that extra uh, power set or, or something. And in the case of some of these characters, it actually defines who they are. They, they, they get along and they form this strange union way back in the day, and then they're called once again when Black Manta strikes, and that sets up a bunch of stories in the main Aquaman book, and we kind of never hear from them again. Uh, yeah, they do appear in issue 20 of uh, the New 52 run, and that is collected here in the first trade, as well as the first annual from the New 52 run. The problem with that is that they used those two issues as an introduction for this series, for this mini-series, Aquaman and the others, and it's a little bit clunky. Like, if you like the characters from the other book, you're not gonna have too much of a problem reading them here but if you're new to this whole thing it's actually a pretty weak introduction to them literally on the first issue Aquaman issue number 20 uh, the main character the main reason why I love this team is that they're led by my favorite DC superhero in the first issue he's only in it for five panels or or uh, two pages for two pages that's it then the rest of the issue is just the others doing their thing but it's a very clunky introduction because you, the, the book assumes that you at least uh, know who they are from their previous adventure now they solve this by introducing a new team member and then in the following issue is the uh, long annual that's not very it's a little bit clunky and cliched and it presents an adventure where they reintroduce everybody and then uh, Arthur's in it uh, throughout the whole thing and uh, then when that ends we get the actual Aquaman and the others the first five issues and we get another introduction to these characters so it's it feels like I'm re it feels like I'm reading three separate stories with with the element of them of like here are the others they're this secret group of characters that you you don't know about but you're gonna know now and then when the story ends we get the same treatment all over again with a different plot element or a villain or something and and, and I guess it's needed for new readers but if you're doing it consecutively like this it can be a little bit of a drag especially uh, for new readers, like I just mentioned. But then when we get to Volume 2, this collects issues 6 through 11, and the two not-so-great uh, feature, uh, Features End one-shots. I was not a fan of Features End, so don't expect a positive review here. Uh, those one-shots don't really do much, just present a hypothetical future that doesn't really get resolved. If you don't read Features End, you're just left like, oh, okay, that, that happened. 
But yeah, issues 6 through 11, actually uh, the highlight of this series. The first uh, five issues present a old Atlantean enemy that wants that gold that was used for the artifacts, he wants it back. So the others are called again by Arthur, and they go on this globe-trotting quest to figure out what the hell's going on. And it's fine, I guess, but the villain, you know, we've seen that before in other stories. It's nothing groundbreaking, but at the same time, it's exciting to see a, a new set of DC characters take center stage. And Arthur, uh, he does his thing, but throughout the book, you feel uh, like you know that the others are taking charge and doing their thing. Now, some of these characters are really interesting if you've read the original stuff, or if you haven't, Tawara is this uh, actual Amazonian from the from Brazil, and she's very earthbound and, and in touch with Mother Nature and all that stuff, and she defends uh, the animals and the trees and all that stuff in a very uh, kick-ass warrior way. You got the character of the operative, he is basically this... Uh, James Bondish character, but he's more of an a-hole than the original James Bond, who has all the secret gadgets, all the intel, all that fun stuff that these characters are going to need. Mobile bases, this huge uh, plane or boat. He, we also have Prisoner of War, one of my favorite characters from the group. He is basically this soldier that uh, is able to commune and is possessed by the soldiers that were killed in action. And he can sort of like uh, be possessed by them and he knows what they went through and he acquires their abilities and all that stuff. So yeah, the book, clunky introduction aside, which by the way, issue 20 of Aquaman was written by uh, Ostrander and he did a really interesting job with that issue. But then on the annual, it, it felt a little flat and sort of... Um, generic superhero-ish fighting uh, they go up against Morgan Le Fay I don't I don't know it's it's a very odd title it's not as great as it could have been that's my main point that's my main critique the art however is splendid I love uh, Lan Medina's artwork on these issues and he really uh, he really does a really he really does a good job and brings a sense of uh, dynamic adventure to the book. Everybody looks clean and crisp. Uh, of course, the cover is done by the great Ivan Reyes, but you see it with characters like this called um, uh, a Legend, I guess he was called, right? Anyway, the old Atlantean foe, stuff like that. It really is reminiscent of what uh, Ivan was doing back in the main Neo 52 title. Unfortunately, you know, this book did not sell all that well. It got cancelled after 11 issues, but I think they did enough. Here's one of those uh, other pages that I was going to highlight, and it looks pretty interesting. Um, overall, the plot elements are a little bit cliched, clunky introduction, but really great artwork from Lan Medina. If you are reading the uh, book for the very first time, uh, I don't know, I guess I would recommend sticking with the main title, and then if you're interested in the others, then yeah, go ahead and, and check this out, plus you get some uh, cool action with Cheshire and other characters that show up. But it's not something I would wholeheartedly recommend. As much as I love the character of Aquaman, and he's in here quite a lot, as well as Mira, it's one of those books where it's dependent on your love and knowledge of the main title. And I and it, it is to be commended. The book was really popular when it came out. You had, for the very first time, uh, if memory serves me right, two... Aquaman books running at the same time. It is to be commended the fact that these two books were selling, or the original book was selling so well that they gave the spin-off a, a chance. And actually, 11 issues is pretty damn great. They were able to do two somewhat solid storylines and conclude them in a uh, sort of a satisfying way. I don't think we need a full-blown Others series, but it was nice to have these characters uh, and to see other uh, 
uh, heroes in the DC world get a moment in the spotlight. I don't know if you've read Aquaman and the others, but I gotta say I enjoyed it. It, it was a fun read. It's not the best one, but it's fun nonetheless, and it, come on, it's, it's Aquaman. I love the character, and he has very interesting side characters that get overlooked. But, yeah, I digress. Whatever. Uh, the book is pretty interesting. Guys, what do you think? Let me know down below. Have you read Aquaman and the others? Did you like it, or did you just stick with the new main uh, New 52 title? As always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Just type We Can Geek Them, and I'm probably there. As always, thank you once again. Liking, commenting, subscribing, you are the very best. I will catch all of you on our next video.